and see I and mean, you were doing a good thing right mm-hmm. and why hr it, it's like a one step down is what you've taken and uh, so so very small fraction of people kind of say so it's not a disadvantage per se but it's hello hi pooja welcome to the curious show hi on a pleasure being here i've been following your uh, show for some time now so pleasure being invited and finally be being a part of this and probably interacting with you after a very very long time so yeah. oh yeah <laughs> thank you i mean i think we've known each other long long time long uh, time yeah. interesting career trajectories we've both had and that's that's what uh, we wanted to just talk to you about today right. Uh, right. given that this is a show about the world of people the world of hr and mm-hmm. how do you navigate navigate transitioning to this function right because a lot of people right. maybe they don't start off on this function and they mm-hmm. want to transition right and you mm-hmm. and i come through a long journey so i think before we get started uh, why don't you just tell people who is pooja right. what is pooja up to and the theme of the show your whole journey and your career Got transitions it. multiple right right Hi everyone. Sorry that I'm interrupting the show, but first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking your time out and listening to the pod. I hope that you're getting some value from the conversations that we have. Now, I have one request from everyone listening in. It will be really really helpful for me if you can just go ahead and click a subscribe. I did an analysis and it appears that 95% of the people who listen to the show don't hit a subscribe. Now the thing is, if I don't get those subscriber numbers, it's going to be pretty unsustainable to be doing this show for a long time and the idea of this is not fame popularity but it's just to get the word and the message across to as many people as we possibly can right so can we have sort of like a gentleman and a ladies agreement between us where if you've got any value from the show you want to support me putting out more people related content and interesting conversations in the people space please take a minute out and hit the subscribe button i'll really really appreciate it thank you and back to the show so uh, kind of rewind um, go back uh, so grown up in jamshedpur so uh, my love for jamshedpur i wear it on my you know uh, on my like very publicly i love that city so grew up there very much in a uh, in the 90s so very close knit sort of an environment uh, but like every other person comes from jamshedpur would know that after 12 there's a dearth of good colleges so i uh plus 12 uh, plus 2 and then moved to delhi uh, to srcc for my graduation uh, everyone around me was doing ca my close friends my friends in uh, college my father is a ca so pretty much knew what i was doing at the age of 17 that okay uh, did my 12 scored well went to srcc uh, now i should prepare for ca which i started doing along with college less like any other kid at that point in time and still now i would say uh done that then moved back to calcutta uh did my graduate uh, my article ship uh, from the lawyer during that time and uh, i think that was the time when i actually realized when i actually put theory to practice when i realized that probably this is not something which i thought i would enjoy as much so on theory and on paper it looked fine uh, but the realization the realization had started coming in but was not very confident at that age of then especially when you're seeing people around you all enjoying and they are all very clear and sort of under that peer pressure you also want to kind of prove yourself and say that okay let's go ahead do this uh somehow managed to kind of work hard definitely but managed to uh, clear ca because in between thoughts did come whether i should should not continue but then one thought which kind of was there that if i started something I want to see through to it so don't want to leave it midway uh let's let's finish something and you know, not don't leave anything midway so that was kind of the only motivation to kind of go ahead or did that uh, at that point of the another thought was that probably i might not enjoy audit because an article ship it was mostly was statutory audit so maybe what if i get into industry what if there are multiple fields in ca itself right so it's not just one thing that you have to stick to i said why not try that and so that's what i did uh, joined tata steel in calcutta itself worked for four years uh, but then there was a point in time when i finally realized that okay three years of article ship exposed to an audit audit sort of an environment four years of working in industry in a you know manufacturing setup with a good organization like tata steel seven years total have not really changed my mind and there's something i should really step back and reassess as to what do i actually want to do uh to be very honest at that point in time uh, this was 2015 um i was not sure if hr was the uh, field that i would want to do i just knew that this is not what something i envision myself doing for the next 30 to 40 years if that is the traditional career span that we look at 
So this I was very clear. So I knew what I did not want to do. Uh, was not sure at that point in time what I wanted to do. So I I took some time off. Uh, so that was the time I think which a lot of exploration happened. I I did a lot of introspection. Spoke to few people. More than speaking to people, more about uh, updating myself, learning what are opportunities are there, assessing what are my priorities, assessing my strengths, uh, and things that I. Think I would do well having you know by that time reached my mid twenties late twenties, uh, uh, so a lot of introspection and everything went uh, into kind of deciding. It took a or it kind of translated into almost a year. In between, I was also thinking why not continue being. I was already married, so why not be a housewife? You know what is wrong in being a housewife? So <laughs> so uh, but uh, so thought multiple thoughts crossing my mind. Uh, but then kind of finally zeroed in on on uh, hr i think another important thing for hr is also the choice of the institute because uh, funnily enough i had only applied to uh, tis uh, or tata institute of social sciences and no other uh, renowned uh, colleges known for hr because uh, the pedagogy that uh, i saw that has was something which really appealed to me so i had uh, so so that's how i kind of Uh, decided. Of course, there were other things which I'm kind of shortening it uh, right now. So uh, a lot of process kind of went into selection, and finally, why it is and why uh, HR. So gave it a shot. Luckily, that happened. I would say my interview panel. I'm still very thankful to that panel who really made me comfortable. Who I felt was one of the best interviews that I have given. Not because I got selected, but because uh, the way they did that interview. Because they were really keen to know me as a person. So I think that was a very good lesson. I still carry that experience with me even after you know seven years now. So. Uh, So that was there, and then uh, moved into. I mean, got through this. Spent some two wonderful years there. Uh, I would say, you know, really uh, exploring areas that I had never done before. Uh, so, because one thing, when I was in SRCC and I was doing CA, I was like, I'm doing BCom and I'm doing CA. I will not, in, I will not get into any extracurricular activities because CA itself is a very tough uh, thing to manage. So I'll just be very, you know, like a horse with blinders. I'll be, you know, that sort of situation. But this time around, I was very thankful by the grace of God. If I've got a chance at another innings, I said I will make the most of it. So I will take part in. case competitions i you know uh, take part in committees and apply for committees etc so i think that was a very good uh, experience that also was uh, part of this journey i would say and uh, this happened i graduated uh, then uh, i joined lodha uh, from campus uh, worked there for two to one half years as an hr business partner uh, handling the operations function over there they call it construction management so your core of engineers so good 900 to 1000 plus headcount uh, function and after two to one and a half years uh, there uh, moved to godrej properties uh, again moved into an hr uh, generalist sort of a role uh, worked for Two two and a half years there, and uh, of now as of now, uh, uh, had a wonderful five years basically as an HR generalist slash HR VP uh, uh, with two big real estate organizations. Very thankful for the experience that both these organizations and the kind of people that you know I got exposed to because of uh, here. Uh, but then there was a time when I uh, been thinking about it for a year. Uh, that uh, would want to really start something of my own and uh, uh, wanted to delve deeper into this HR domain and do something independently. So as of now, of course, I've now moved into or I'm planning to move into full fledged into uh, an entrepreneurship sort of innings uh, where I'll uh, focus on HR consulting and work with my husband Sampar on uh, scaling the corporate training vertical for him. So yeah, <laughs> so, so so yeah. That, <laughs> so that's uh, very envious i mean off 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 the top of the bat people listening to it very envious kind of journey right you did ca people mba uh, now entrepreneurship but but there yeah, is yeah, a lot to unpack there but yeah. let's start at the very beginning and i think uh, uh, you and i shared that right we, we did ca uh, right. hr uh, I have my reasons, but I'm very mm-hmm. keen on understanding, and this is more for people listening in, right? right. Uh, I I get messages, and I'm sure you also do of people who I won't call CA a mistake. It's never a mistake. It's a great career, yeah. but uh, exactly. people who've done it, but then realize that I don't want to mm. do it, right? Um, mm. If you could go back in time, right, mm. and had to relook at CA, what mm. would what would your thought process have been with? Let's say you have that maturity that you have now. Back mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. Uh, so that others listening can emulate. Would you? How would you think differently? 
Oh, probably I think the answer for me now in hindsight is clear is that it was a lot about what everyone was doing, and um, I think in an age uh, where uh, again at seventeen, eighteen, you you I feel you know yourself that much, and your opinion about yourself is a lot formed by what people think about you. That includes your mm-hmm. close family, friends, etc. Et so when you are doing well in 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 subjects in in my metric for that was marks so now i know that that is probably not a very good metric so while it might you might understand that subject but may not interest you so and now even if i look back at that age also somewhere deep down i probably knew uh, my inclination has always been more towards uh, even back then into social sciences and to so called humanities uh, that sort of a thing uh, but uh, one thought was also that at that point in time that you know if you are a good student you'll go to science if you are probably i know if, i know i'm not being politically correct but at that point in time that was a thought that you know if it was science or else if it, if you were into humanities or arts probably you know you might not have gone through something and commerce was like a mid ground so so it's so in fact people still, were very still the same it thing, still is it's yeah still in fact people thing, were yeah. surprised and asked me at that time that why did you choose commerce you should have taken up science and i was like no i mean it's not to i know word by self to karna <laughs> but having to answer your question more um, probably i sh- i could have done a little bit more practical internships probably seen because when i got to know about it as when i put theory to practice so if that uh, that sort of application happens now you'll get to know yourself a little bit better so probably explore what i did in that one year from 2015 to 2016 at uh, in my late 20s i should have probably done that in my mm-hmm. late teens and early 20s and uh, then figured out that okay this is what you're probably good at and let's go ahead with it so the problem is that that time back then we really didn't have the opportunities yeah. right? we didn't yeah, have yeah. like we were at one place there was no internet we were doing hmm. you know this hmm. sort of telephone yeah yeah it was very yeah. difficult to do that right. uh, but now then <clears throat> then what you are saying to people is uh, if you are ambivalent if you are not sure hmm. uh, this is a very costly mistake to make uh, you rather go in and just test it out uh, again i wouldn't say it's a costly mistake because uh, i mean even my decision making whether it was to move from ca to hr off right now to move from a job to an entrepreneurship i have always asked myself that one question is that see i feel decisions are all experiments that you are yet to test it out so it can either go the right way not right way or not as expected as you had thought but until and unless it's a very very life milestone sort of a life changing sort of a uh, situation like probably choosing a partner or you know that sort of a thing with uh, apart from that i think a lot of uh, decisions you can navigate around it so i think i always mm-hmm. ask myself this question is what is the worst that can happen i'm not saying it is set in stone even now I, and like i said even if probably with practical applications with internships exploring yourself you may may not still reach the right decision and that is okay i think what i want to really focus on it is okay to uh, to step back reassess and then go ahead so it's okay to take those two steps back and then move ahead so i mean do I, i always ask my first uh, myself the question what is the worst that can come out of it if my answer is something which i feel i can manage then i go ahead with that decision and uh, of course there's a lot other things to do it i i am a person who likes to plan right so i like to write my pros and cons and then mull over it a long time but at the end of it what tilts me in one direction is this question that what is the worst that can come and if it is something that i feel i can manage in the future then and and my maybe my pros are weighing or whatever be the other data etc that comes with it i'll go ahead with it so it's not something if it's an irre- it's a reversible decision then yes i think that's that's the important one it's very interesting when you said it you're thinking about it it's true any career decision you make is actually reversible and like a lot yeah. of things we do to ourselves unlike those like you said marriage you buying a house moving yeah. to a city i mean that's also reversible Correct. but certain right. ones are irreversible but this career it's really is difficult to yeah, kind of Uh, career is you can always reverse it's just difficult right. little bit and like you very rightly said that you know doing a ca is not a mistake as in no definitely whatever you do learn it does help you in some way or the other or you will be able to leverage it in some way or the other may not be in this way i feel i don't know if it's a right answer but for me i feel that ca and probably at that time um, 
being from calcutta i think most of the people who were there were from uh, these business communities i think i learned a lot from them in terms of financial planning and how important is it it, it is so I, i think my first sip which in that i got into it uh, when i observed these people around me and that has helped helped me i was, I was in- about to say that for me also the first trade i made was because of people uh, when I, in my article ship i didn't right, even know what a right. stock was yeah right I, exactly uh-huh. so these kind of conversations okay. even though my father is a ca i mean we never had at home that like the way mm. uh, the certain communities are there and it's a good thing to learn from them i really you know respect them for that so i think that was also a very important thing which helped me to build my financial corpus even now and even back then 7 8 years back also so that's true that was also a very important factor for me while taking a decision to, for me finances have to be in place it gives me a lot of it's not anything a mental peace of mind it's not that i will run after money but of course yeah it have there has to be an for me personally and i talk only from my point of view there has to be an element of uh, practicality attached to it so uh, even the decision to move to hr was apart from the fact that i really liked it was uh, also the fact that there were certain practical uh, as an i felt that i would be good in it i knew how to navigate corporates so of course that was there and of course this money bank that was there really helped me take that courage to take the decision hmm so uh, let's let's get back to um, <clears throat> this part where let's say somebody who's um, i don't know worked for a couple of years right uh, two to three years is when yeah. sort of you figure out that hey i need a change right so mm-hmm. uh, people have today unfortunately or fortunately like the way to go about it is people do an mba because that's that transition period yeah. where you figure out mm-hmm. right what i want to do but uh, i don't think that's probably the most non optimal way to do it but uh, you you went through you knew very clearly what you wanted and you did an mba for that right so right. Uh, how was that self you mentioned about self exploration right we figured out yeah. on hr right what advice would you have for people who's going through that uh, it can be they can they can figure out any career change but what is right. the blueprint that you have i think uh, in my case i uh, that point in time when i dabbled in multiple things at that point in time so for example i i i uh, learned french on the side i interned with a social business um, and like i said multiple things i was also enjoying myself as a housewife also to be very frank and honest uh, but uh, but um, what really pulled me in that direction was a i mean i thought that i do have to do something i mean probably a life of a housewife is not right for for me for me economic independence was something which tilted me in this favor and and it still is uh, uh, the other piece was that how did i figure out is like it was more of a now if i put it in hr jargon more of a of a competency assessment of myself that, that time i did not know that jargon so uh, now now that i connect the dots it's actually kind of like that so what is it that i am good at what is it that i can do well what is it i can develop okay probably this is not something i not my forte so i think the, this sort of talking talking to my husband or women probably introspection and then recounting certain instances in the past even in, as an article or even as a professional what are those things in those four uh, post qualification four year journeys what i felt what was those things those things which i really enjoyed doing there it was not as if it was a torture throughout so to be very you know fair so what was those areas which i really liked doing and then it's invariably turned out that it was uh, the science of people i wouldn't say you know it's very easy to say oh hr is that you have to be an extrovert or I, I, and i'm completely an opposite so it's not that you don't have to be an extrovert but that you don't have to say that oh i love i hear a lot of people saying i want to be an hr because i love talking to people i love interacting with people i mean while it might make your job easier uh, but uh, that is not it so uh, but i realized that you know this is the aspect of it when i meet people i kind of analyze or i i i kind of or i was exposed to a lot of good training programs uh, during tata steel so i really was very interested to know the side went behind that seemed that like a th- lot of thought that got behind it what was the science behind it etc so certain things about a mix of uh, academic interest and a mix of personality uh, where i felt that i would kind of uh, match with this so that kind of for me help but having said that right. one thing i again which i said, i think i've repeat or uh, mentioned earlier is that uh, a hands on experience would have uh, is is a really good way of testing yourself so, yeah. mm. so to summarize um, and and i agree with uh, everything right uh, you need want to be very aware of yourself mm-hmm. right if you're very aware of yourself which is like in your words if you do a competency assessment now some people can actually sit down and do it 
there are templates mm-hmm. or you're very aware this is what i'm good at this is what i'm bad at mm-hmm. uh, coupled with like you said hands on experience like putting yeah. theory to practice uh, will probably solidify like for me for me it was just all luck 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 okay <laughs> it happened through a transition where it wasn't really that thought out but mm. when i mean yeah i mean for me entrepreneurship again happened through because i faced a problem and there i realized that hey i really do have these people chops and i enjoy this right uh, but there was that self reflection for me also in a very uh, when i struggled kind of way where yeah. because entrepreneurship kind of you yeah, entrepreneurship is a one thing where you get to know yourself <laughs> you right. don't have an option but net net right. is the same like really figure yourself out be very honest with yourself mm. get an assessment of yourself mm. and then get mm. hands on experience i think is the right way right yeah right. that's where uh, and, and if you're two three years into your career i think you can actually do this multiple times you can yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. all right um a related topic you mentioned uh, somewhere uh, that after doing all this you had the courage right um right. now that's that's not easy right a lot of people will do a lot of things they'll do these assessments they'll be very clear that mm. okay i have to make this transition but they don't get the courage mm. mm-hmm. right for you how did that courage come what was that courage that okay i can leave all of this 5 6 7 mm. years of my life mm. and i'm very clear right mm. uh, but i'm starting from i won't say zero but yeah. you're definitely starting down right how right. did that courage right. come I think uh, for me, I, I th- it's a mix of multiple things. Uh, one thing is, of course, like I mentioned, that uh, when I thought that okay, even if I don't go in for this, I go back looking for a job in a CA sort of a domain. Uh, but all those uh, feelings, etc., and all all that, uh, uh, the moment I kind of envisioned myself doing a, a a role or similar to the roles that I've been doing in the past, uh, I I just knew that this is like I. it was like reliving those emotions again so i knew this is not something i want to subject myself to uh so um, uh, so so that was clear and also of course uh, like i mentioned for me the having the financial corpus was important and even if i have to experiment and mm-hmm. take that risk uh, whether it is right now and even then is that that x amount that i have in my mind and at any point in time even now i do not intend to stop my investments from happening which happens at a healthy percentage uh, of my income so uh, so so that was i didn't want to stop that i didn't want if i saw that it that was not getting impacted and of course it was building in the background so that was also meant for me it gave mental peace um, and uh, of course a lot of encouragement i feel from in my case my partner uh, so a lot of encouragement from his his end that you know i have your back so um, so go ahead mm-hmm. and you know experiment and you know and kind of there to manage whether it is finances also probably a little bit of circumstances i may be, maybe it might sound a little privileged but i um, i mean it was just the two of us and uh, when it came to my parents i did not have that sort of financial responsibility uh, that is that might not be true for mm-hmm. everyone so while it sounds very you know rosy and nice right now but i feel the circumstances were also worked in my favor so if probably if i would not in that situation where i may would have mm-hmm. had a lot of say loans or emis or things to you know uh, manage uh, family risk or finances i may may not have uh, gone for it or probably would have gone for it later so i don't know i don't have an answer to that but yeah i think two three things together uh, was mm-hmm. you're right gave me the uh, courage yeah the finances finances and backing of your family yeah. your partner yeah. your yeah. loved yeah. one right. i think yeah pretty much but let's uh, since yeah. you Ha huh, sorry go on. No no so sorry no no I think I was just kind of adding on to it so I think that one is your financial kind of pillar yeah. which is there and that is your emotional slash mental uh, pillar that was your family and friends who kind of back you I think these two things gave me a lot of uh, courage mm-hmm. to move it and probably a little bit of a negative motivation also that oh I don't want to <laughs> can't envision myself again going through that cycle again so let's go ahead <laughs> let's let's be the forward looking rather than backward looking so yeah. but um, you are you are just bringing up financial um, let's say uh, what's the word financial independence yeah. uh, it's very important right uh, i was just talking to some uh, kids uh, very recently who for what 25 ish right and mm. they've just started investing mm. now mm. Uh, so they never in a position they need the job right and uh, mm. uh, without the job things were going to be difficult 
so they're not in a position where even if they do not like what they are doing they cannot leave it they cannot afford to take the break that means you have to go back to your parents and not everybody has mm. the circumstances right yeah, that's right. a very important one but uh, mm. i know it's, this is not a finance show but yeah. uh, what what like how what did what were you doing right which gave you that financial pillar uh, you think 5 6 7 years into your life was it just right. sips mutual funds or what advice yeah. do you have yeah so so i am a kind of a moderate risk taker sort of a person so i think for me I, but i think more than that good thing about sips is it gives instills that financial discipline so i think financial discipline now whether you do you do it in sips or whether you do it in a fixed deposit or an rd like you said it's not a financial we're not mm-hmm. debating the merits of it but i think mm-hmm. financial all the boils down to financial discipline that you know and and um, the target has always been for uh, me um, to aim to do more than 50% you know putting it in your investment in fact the number is actual numbers is in higher than that so uh, so uh, so yeah so i think financial discipline is the proper because i have a certain vision and i've always probably had that that you know this is the corpus that i want to lead etc whatever map that goes into it so i think discipline is the foremost thing that mm-hmm. comes to my mind and and you started that can, early like from first job I did from article ship, like I said. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> of course, it's expanded as the years have gone by. Ah, yeah, of course. The seeds were planted there. <laughs> and I kept investing in companies which I knew nothing about and lost money. <laughs> That's okay. It's experience, right? I mean, you've learned. I haven't learned. I haven't okay. Learned. <laughs> I've lost so much money on Bitcoin. I'm still investing oh, today. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no but the jokes aside of course yeah, like i have yeah. like I, i i get it like and it's super important like if somebody i think i tell people now especially people who are starting that uh, get exactly what you said financial uh, yeah. sort of uh, discipline and the best way to do that is just automate some part of it mm-hmm. uh, good that people are waking up but they're waking up at 26 27 when you know you've already mm-hmm. lost 5 to 4 5 years of salaries mm-hmm. anyway uh, as long yeah. as people start it gives you that pillar yeah. to experiment right, right, later right, on otherwise it gets right, difficult right. yeah uh, okay i'll i'll change tracks to something that I, both of us have strong views on uh, see people want to get into hr right. uh, uh, there are many people right mm. um, and we'll get into pay of hr little later on maybe uh, and mm. bust that myth that people have right. but what if so for somebody who wants to get into hr who has not worked in hr doesn't know mm. what hr is mm. how would you describe what hr is and the work that goes on mm. and at the same time bursting some of those preconceived notions that people have right. about a function right so i think i'd seen a picture and i think it's a very common uh, image uh, that i've i had seen some years back and i think a lot of people in hr must have seen that and i somehow i feel that that kind of aptly uh, conveys it is was this picture of this iceberg where you know you could just see certain uh, parts of it like probably your recruiter or probably the person mm-hmm. who's running these employee engagement activities or probably doing hr operations to some extent and below that i mean the iceberg the bulk of it below it was what happens at the back end so which a lot of people are not privy to uh, in my experience also most of these conversations or uh, i think the meat of hr whether it is talent management talent identification career development this designing the career path of how a person should be and if it's lnd how does a learner journey look like what are the needs so a lot of the multiple things and of course rewards and compensation i think a lot of people in hr also i feel it's a um, mystery so there's a lot of thing that happen at the back end which a lot of which is not front facing so the impression that people carry is what they can apparently see so a lot of people the moment i uh, tell i am in hr the first thing they say is recruitment while well, it is a very important uh, sub function of hr or sub field of hr but that is not the only thing so a lot of these other things and when i actually sit down and explain to people and especially for me something like talent and learning i'm really passionate about so that is even in my you know hr bt uh, kind of gen- um, tenure i also kind of spend a lot of time in these fields and i start explaining to them okay competency hota hai aisa hota hai there's a scientific reason how do you identify high pods there's a scientific way of how do you kind of design uh, you know it's not just so when i actually sit with people leaders who are more privy to these sort of conversations or non people leaders when i explain it to them that's when it kind of clicks to them that oh, okay ye bhi hota hai acha aisa bhi hota hai and they really get really getting interested there so i think what is exposed to your usual employee is just probably the transactional stuff so 
but what is the brain mm. or the science behind it is they never can to get to know or for that matter people and it is how are we leveraging that in to reach certain decisions to reach certain you know path etc whatever so most i think mean, we, we don't really it is not visible so i think that is uh, that's probably why it leads to certain misconceptions and uh, why people kind of think that uh, oh it's uh, i mean i've heard people saying that oh if i have to manage work life balance i can do uh, let's hr you know you are an hr so you can do that or i had heard many many years back someone uh, telling uh, and uh, many years back it was many years back someone uh, telling me that you know i'm doing mba and my professor has told me that oh for women it's good to do hr because you can manage your time so you will go back home at 6 o'clock so it's a very good profession for women to do this was a long time back sometime in 2007 8 mm-hmm. i heard someone telling me that um, and so probably a finance or a sales is more uh, suitable for um, a, a male student and for a female student why don't you think about hr <laughs> so things like that fantastic things like that is what so uh, so so i think that is the thing so if if you've been in a people manager position or if you've been in a people leader when you were that is the level at which probably those kind of discussions happen to some extent maybe some of, some of them or to some extent a few of them will un- understand that but uh, not a lot of people kind of get to uh, see mm-hmm. what happens behind the scenes basically so yeah or so one favorite thing is sort of sorry yeah, yeah. Then then this, is people, this is appraisal season, so I think uh, one of the favorite <laughs> things that people will come after the appraisals are done is that you know HR has uh, uh, you know please increase my salary or my rating is poor or whatever be the thing. And I have been told that HR has changed that or HR has 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 not given me this. Uh, then it's it's a education that you sit with them and explain what how the process is, how it is done, and you know there is a. if there is a bell curve followed by the organization if how, what is it what is the statistics behind it what is it etc then i have really seen people open up their eyes and say oh okay this is how it is now i get it or now i understand oh it's not only hr oh it's my manager i should get back in touch with so those sort of thing but do you do you believe in bell curve Okay. Does it work? I'm also debating with that question. I think sometimes it is necessary, when sometimes it's not. I think I think probably we'll need a different, separate conversation for that. But uh, to answer that, uh, it does help with managing the you know the kitty. But uh, merit should be given where it is worth, and there should not be any forced uh, ranking that is implemented. Then, I mean, as long as the budget is managed, I think we should keep merit in mind. and not go just because for the heck of it so you know there's something um, some tiktok or something i'd seen uh, i don't know when a few 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 months back did this but they showed that this is like the what do they call it the gaussian distribution i think uh, binomial not binomial i forgot gaussian distribution yeah that's the bell curve that's apparently nature like nature works okay. in that way okay. so they took like a bunch of like bachpan mein to hota tha na used to navigate those balls so what they did was mm-hmm. uh, somewhere like they put some balls from the top there was a device upar se let the balls go and you know some device was shaped in a weird way and all of them automatically sort of distributed itself okay. to sort of that bell curve so mm-hmm. they like that's how mm-hmm. if you leave things to random it will come to that only yeah so mm-hmm. uh, okay. Uh, okay. i'm i'm pretty sure if you experiment and and i have data also i tried it in my previous company mm-hmm. where there was no bell mm-hmm. curve okay. but then when you plot But, it yeah it's always this mm. okay maybe mm. skewer mm. to a it's always yeah. skewer a little bit this side yeah but yeah. this will always happen will invariably come up yeah yeah it's just how we do because we mm. we mm. we always like to stay in the middle uh, anyway mm. um, i'm digressing mm. um all right so i i'll come back now to uh, ca to hr right um, yeah. Yeah. we spoke of what people function is uh, what it is not Uh, to anyone listening in, uh, if you think it's like a bed of roses, and I want to do this transition, it's not. Uh, it is a lot of hard work. You're responsible for people ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are multiple functions, like like you explained. Maybe mm. everybody thinks it's either Rangoli or it's hiring. Yeah. Again, that's not Rangoli. So it doesn't even happen these days. I don't know why that cliche thing is there anyway. Uh, yeah. uh, But even then, that uh, was also very important. <laughs> बिकॉज इट इज समथिंग लाइक इट्स लाइक हाइजीन फैक्टर नाउ डेज तो अगर वो होता है तो ठीक है इट्स नॉट कैंड ऑफ अपलो आई मीन ठीक है बट अगर वो नहीं होता है तो पीपल रियली कॉल इट आउट दैट यू नो वो क्यों नहीं हुआ 
కాంపిటెన్సీస్ <laughs> దట someone who has it like uh, mm-hmm. and they would do well in this function and if someone's confused that hey i am in a fun- i'm doing something mm-hmm. that i don't enjoy mm-hmm. i have these x sort of competencies uh, right. and these x sort of competencies would actually make you very well in in the people function it can be either of the functions mm-hmm. what do you think those are because you've gone through that you've realized that in yourself mm, i think uh... probably it's not very different from any other function i would say um, i mean few things that immediately come up to my mind is uh, and probably right now it might sound sound a little generic but uh, top of the mind is you have to be really uh, how do i put it um, you have to go, go to the depth of things like you have to be really analytical so it's not just obviously you're dealing with people at the end of the day everyone is not same but uh, try to bring how do i put it i don't know if it's a competency but i think uh, just try to understand what is the science behind it it will make probably your life a little bit easier uh, so if you can read up research papers you can be a little bit more aware of the psychology of things it kind of just aids you i feel but that's not really a competency uh, what no, more else? like uh, what is it that you know you you enjoy doing um, you like uh if people think that hey i like talking to people uh, no. and be good in people function it's, it's probably not not necessary one. yeah it it might just make things easier like i said for you so if it's you're an extrovert mm-hmm. it might come a little bit naturally to you uh but then that is not stopping you i think probably introverts uh, observe a lot so i think ulta bhi kaam kar sakta in the sense that you know you you are observing you're seeing and then coming in at the right time with the right data just because you've observed and you've you know done, done your back end research and then come up with that mm. particular recommendation solution whatever be the thing so that is there um, apart from that i think is an hr empathy i think again then that is something which is for every other uh, uh, profession mm. as well but i think in this function again you're dealing with people uh, empathy that should be at the core of it and doing right as in in terms of uh, it's it's you are the point between business and uh, and and people but at the end of the day how do you create that balance and you are doing right uh, that 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 not that not star of you know uh, i will stay true to what is good uh, for everyone and not just cow down to the pressure and i think i think another piece to this is someone should should have the backbone to you know stand up and call out mm. and uh, turn around and tell others because Uh, the way probably the function has also evolved i have met some people leaders who just expect that i will t- hr is executional so i will just tell you that this is what i want this is how it is to be done and you just do it but if you turn around and you tell them no this is not what i think will work or whatever whatever xyz reasons uh, some people are a little surprised who've not come from hr organizations they they, they uh, uh, are a little bit surprised and they turn around and say ki how can you how can hr you know turn around and say this thing because they've been used to seeing mm-hmm. it what it is you should have that backbone to uh, to to step down step down and say that you know this is what is right this is to be done and not succumb to that pressure i think that's also very important especially in hr vp roles or you know hr head roles that is something which uh, really mm. that conviction uh, really is important but isn't there that problem uh, in in our function especially where everybody has an opinion yeah yeah uh, like everybody has an everybody opinion has on an opinion. hey yes. we should do this like yes. how have you yeah. dealt with that like that's a little difficult i mean then you have to yeah. go and explain how do you right. deal with this i think i've dealt it in different ways and for me i always depending on the stakeholder that i'm dealing with uh, so if it's it's a stakeholder who who is more number oriented who's data oriented so if you have some good numbers and data to back up your claim well and good uh, that way if it is a person who is more dealt with emotions etc then find out a way uh, according mm-hmm. to that uh, so it's it's deferred depending on the person that i am kind of uh, dealing with uh, no one sort of approach uh, has been the way um, but uh, Mm. but also data if, yeah. is data is mm. a big one right because right. it's always been 
people is fuzzy you can't really mm. quantify it but mm. i think when you can mm. really quantify it i've mm. seen a lot of like sort of jaw dropping mm. eye opening moments mm. oh acha you can mm. actually quantify a lot of people mm. problems mm. Mm. then you ha- leave that room for yeah their opinion mm. right which is which we know that is they're entitled to it but may not always be the best way to go about it and people have that opinion or i mean like you said very correctly everyone has an opinion about hr everyone feels that <laughs> they can do that better uh, that is where i think uh, we need to have that uh, science available with us not only form of data but any good research theories research papers any any uh, good finding i mean there's a lot of work that is happening by you know organizational psychologists etc so i mean to put some structure to this abstract top uh, so called abstract topic i think mm-hmm. data and these sort of research back findings just really helps to put the science behind it i think what we miss mm-hmm. is the science behind it because there it, there mm-hmm. is there's a science and an art i think the science part is something where if we are strong about that it makes it easier to communicate to our stakeholders acha do you think um, since you're talking of data numbers and people like, is there an advantage like if any ca mm-hmm. listening in who wants to go to people has the people bent of mind understand science mm. understands let's mm. say human behavior mm. understand psychology mm. does it help did it help you like having a very strong numbers foundation mm. in mm. the in your line function in people mm. did did it help you is it like a plus mm. one it does help it also kind of helps you to understand uh, the business also a little bit better so definitely i would say that it it is a plus point uh, for someone who comes from a numbers background you it just that it makes you uh, it, you just understand it a little bit better once you know what is the pain point of your uh, stakeholder uh, or you understand what is the value chain of the business etc that that uh, how do i put it uh, that uh, acumen is there to some extent so it just mm. makes your life easier so because of that you just know how to navigate the situation better you just know what is the solution to be given or at least attempt to get that solution i'm not saying you will kind of come out every time with you know flying colors but okay at least you can think in the right direction because that is something uh, and i do feel some people even who are a little bit who spent some years in the function i feel some people not everyone but some people in hr still struggle with it so hmm. it is a plus point no doubt uh, i mean i agree to that so yeah good so for any ca listening in if you if you feel like hey i've made a mistake i don't want to do this for 30 years and you right. feel you're good in people it's it's i think it's 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 helpful it's helpful and nowadays it today is. that and where analytics is taking such a big step forward mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. we need in fact there are a lot of people who are in da are now moving to people analytics right because mm. they feel like hey, i am a da mm. but i like uh, i like people right i get i get people right. Um, right. now while while that's not really a, a much of a great competency to do in this but Correct. it gets them into the people function uh, and they transition to people analytics which i think is very needed right i mean mm. you need you need more people actually choosing people analytics as a function mm. Um, mm. i think that's where we'll have more yeah mm. um so these are the advantages any disadvantage you think for uh, cas advantage i think for me uh, when i i mean it was a very temporary sort of a disadvantage i think uh, so when i uh, two ways i look at it uh, one is uh, related to me as an individual so for me and that may not be for everyone uh, when i straight away after so 6 7 years i went back to college uh when and there was a uh, research paper on organization behavior and all those sort of things i found it and coming from a number and a more structured uh, sort of a background where you know you have these uh, rules and the standard accounting standards etc whatever be the thing uh, it was a little difficult for me to wrap around a few concepts initially because in the first glance it felt a little abstract but then of course i had when i went through that i read it better i reread it spoke to people around me then gradually i got the hang of it so i don't think it's a very big disadvantage it was probably initially the one first month or so when i was trying to grapple and understand that but again you come over it the other piece is uh uh it doesn't bother me uh but uh, and i don't think it's a disadvantage uh per se it depends on how you look at it is uh this thing called a uh, new term that i learned very recently this is some, something called a social depreciation it's like uh, when uh, yeah so, so i also came across this term very very recently so basically your perceived value in society kind of falls 
So, so, so like I said, it doesn't bother me, and it's again a very yeah. temporary thing. So, maximum people, the most people really applauded, or they're very curious about it. If not anything else, there's a very tiny fraction of people who uh, don't understand it. It is okay. I mean, to each their own. Mm. Uh, but uh, this thing that you know they say, oh, CA. I mean, it's such a glorified profession, and it is. It has every right to be. You work so hard to clear. Mm. I mean, how many people clear that? But for them, because they do not understand, or there are these certain myths about HR, uh, they kind of view this as okay. Uh, I mean, CA. I mean, you are doing a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. And why HR? It, it's like a one step down is what you've taken, and. Uh, so, so very small fraction of people kind of say. So it's not a disadvantage per se, but it's like, yeah. But uh, one advantage, uh, I don't know whether we should talk of this, uh, yeah. comp. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, let's, let's burst some bubbles there. P- right. CA comp, let's say same experience, right? Right. CA right. comp, uh, people comp, and, and I'm saying uh, not at a junior level, but... Mm. Mm. More when you're senior manager right. plus above, which is right, which right. is more. <laughs> I would say pretty competitive, and in certain uh, evolved organizations, sometimes a little bit higher also for HR. So that's what I have seen uh, so far. I think in uh, I think in more than not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was I was pleasantly surprised. Like I knew, like I said, for me, practic- pragmatism is an important factor for any decision that I take. So it doesn't always come from a place of passion. While for some people that is also good. But I mean, I knew I knew I liked HR, but I also wanted to marry some pragmatism. Of course, when I saw this, I had seen, okay, it has decent placements and etc. So I knew probably at the end of two years, I would be getting an X uh, salary. But what was a pleasant uh, 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 thing for me was uh, once I got into full-fledged HR, like hands-on roles, I realized that, yeah, I mean, pretty much, uh, if you're coming from good pedigree uh, uh, B school and mm. you have specialized in HR, uh, there is there is not much. Like you correctly mentioned, there's actually there's not much of a difference, and there's actually you end up. It's more, yeah. Anymore. Even in startups, like yeah, you've seen yeah. industries, I've right. seen startups across, right? Mostly, right. yeah. Yeah. So in fact, uh, when even after not having worked for a few years in between when that one year of break and then of course two years of uh, test that I did and when I came out I realized that I've kind of matched it up or even a little bit higher uh, better also uh, for you know uh, CAs who with that X number of years of experience so that's also something which people do not have an idea about and uh, yeah. they're really surprised when you say that oh this is how much so and so can earn or with these many years of experience or whatever be the domain and so people really don't have an idea about that good i hope i hope people listen listen to this it's kind of very uh, polarizing but it's the truth and it's uh, right. i'm pretty sure we've seen enough data points and we have access right. to enough reports to right. quantify it so again like it's mm-hmm. it's not like i'm glorifying our function i mean yeah correct, we both correct. love this function right but right right people so, you're right this what social depreciation, depreciation. my god that's wow <laughs> okay uh, um, like okay let that happen but your financial you are appreciating but yes yeah, the, yeah. the 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 caveat is you've you've got to come uh, okay maybe good pedigree is um like a gateway into you being you know really mm. good at what you're doing right mm. uh, it's it's uh, thing right. uh, please don't be swayed by these words <laughs> Right. Uh, right. It's 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 only Fair. it's only net net positive, but you've got to be really Correct. good at it. You've got to love it. You've got to come to Correct. it Correct. to to really do the right things. Right, right, yeah, right. I mean, right. With, with the right intent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs> no, I'm just um, saying. Yeah, correct. Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 you're gone, you're gone. No, I was just saying that the Kampala piece is just becomes like a good cherry on the top sort of a thing. So come in yeah. for the right reasons, uh, hmm. uh, but this kind of just sweetens the deal a bit better. Uh, I know you just started the entrepreneurship yeah. journey, but uh, that's like the thing that a lot of people want. So I won't obviously I won't delve into it and touch much on it. But uh, okay. a lot of people do. Okay, we've covered people wanting to make a career change, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. entrepreneurship is also a career change, right? Uh, and it is being looked at more positively in today's world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to touch on uh, for people listening in. Uh, mm. 
like if they are really thinking this and let's let's take mm. take it to someone who's thinking it and let's say after completing a decade of of mm. you know corporate or mm. you've been a decade into your journey right uh, how do you how do you go about this what what are mm. those things that you must check box in mm. uh, at least you've check boxed which mm. gave you that mm. leverage that hey i i can now try this and mm. irrespective of what happens you've made right, the decision right. uh, mm. what do what do people what's the blueprint people should follow if there is one i don't know i know i know yeah probably again for each person their motivations or their blueprint might kind of differ but i think one important thing is uh, which i also grappled with because i've been thinking about this for a year and then after a year is when i kind of took the decision um, uh, is that uh, i mean don't equate it to a job so if you uh, for me initially i'll talk about myself initially when i was not being able to make that decision uh, what used to really hit me and i used to talk it in this terms that oh there's going to be loss of income at least for a few months uh, that that flow that regular flow again like i said the financial corpus and all makes me comfortable but uh, but it's just used to that x flow coming in every month regularly at a certain date and and in, and in, i mean you like it at the end of the day so uh, if if That is the salary. Salary is, is the worst drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> it so, is, yeah. and and I and I will be very thankful to that also because because of that I've been able to kind of build it. It has helped me build that up. So, I mean, I don't want to. I'm really grateful to my sal- salary. Uh, but if if you are someone who uh, probably mm, cannot get out of that, or if you keep equating yourself, saying that, uh, uh, I'm probably I need. better was to kind of articulate it but uh, uh, if you keep thinking that oh it's going to be a loss of income or if if that keeps on happening then and it's such a big issue then probably entrepreneurship is not for you and then that is okay mm. uh, if you're just tied to that idea uh, and you're not able mm. to come out of it so initially for a few months i also grappled with that um, uh, and then i stopped i had to kind of do a mindset shift that you know if i continue thinking this way this is not really going to help me uh also i don't want to put a very you know rosy picture uh, of an entrepreneurship is that uh, of course where the earning potential is huge uh i mean it's not all rosy i mean as an ek you know you will come in and very next day you start getting work and whatever whatever you've decided to do so uh, you have to be really resilient on that uh, and like really sure uh, that i'm okay with that money that cash flow not coming in for a, for me i have fixed a timeline approximately that you know by this timeline mm. i should get this much percentage of my whatever income i was earning and i kind of set milestones like that let's see how it pans out um but uh, uh, but yeah so i think that we have to come out of that mindset of seeing that so called drug every month uh, and uh, the fact that you come with this thought that oh i come i come from good organizations i worked in x and sex whatever be the thing uh, very next day things will start running you have to have that resilience so uh, it's not that easy as it, some people make it uh, look like so uh, that reality check has to be there i think that's the what i was looking for uh, reality check has to be there <laughs> very clearly so think, yeah. and mentally uh, i think see whatever work you do no matter how much efforts you're putting in the the efforts you put in and the mental sort of pressure you have when you're doing an entrepreneurship is always going to be more there's no work mm. life balance it's just work right mm. Uh, mm. Uh, i mean yes there is life but uh, if if like you said just just extending your thought uh, mm. if if you're comfortable with that the money drug uh, mm. if you're comfortable with sort of that balance in the life i think entrepreneurship mm. is mm. is not i mean and i i speak mm. as as a perfect example right. of this right right <laughs> or probably if you're used to a certain structure because there's no routine or no structure mm. so today you're working on this tomorrow in the mm. other or because uh, i mean that's also something which i am trying to uh, settle to right now i know kind of reconcile myself to but yeah if you're used to someone with a certain routine or structure and i mean that's not there and of course it's your baby so the entire anyways in a job you have a sense of ownership coming the professional that all mm. of us are mm. all of us have that ownership but here i think it, things are more at stake so the investment is much more there so i think emotionally resilient and that uh, that is a very important thing that you should be really sure about we've yeah. covered a lot of topics and i hope it has been helpful i mean from hopefully 
people who are early in the journey or mid in the journey what are the sort of things you mm-hmm. think about the courage to make that change right. uh, we've we've busted myths about the people function right right uh, what it is what it is not but we sort of figured out that it's it, it is net positive if you want to be a part of this uh, and then to entrepreneurship i mean <laughs> great journey uh, i wish you all the best in in your entrepreneurship um, stint and and uh, I hope people just listen to this and get get some value or at least get some guidance guidance from you so before we wrap up uh, right. any any sort of closing thoughts for someone who's listening in who is considering mm-hmm. uh, either a career change or a jump into entrepreneurship uh, mm-hmm. any closing thoughts i think probably uh, will be kind of reiteration of a few things that we touched upon in the last uh, one hour or so uh, but uh, if someone is contemplating that i think there is no right time if you're waiting for that right time to happen uh, you will always find some reason or the other to kind of rethink that so just take the plunge i would say of course have certain certain important mm. checks which are in black for me for which was finance for someone else it can be something else for it because even if you have 10 years of experience or 5 years or 15 or 20 that will take that bit of coverage whether it it be entrepreneurship or whether it is career change uh, just go ahead and do it sometimes you just have to if you're waiting for that right moment to happen or the right time to happen mm. i think you'll always find excuses to not go ahead and do that so don't overthink that yes do plan it out uh, go in with some sort of planning uh, but uh, also don't go on the other extreme and overthink it so yeah yeah you see you end up never doing it <laughs> yeah cool That's thank right. you thank you pooja thanks thanks uh, rana this was this was great uh, thanks for coming on bye bye thank you so much thanks for your good wishes and yeah. good luck to you as well <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. thanks for having me bye bye good night bye bye